Hello students, in this lecture we will be covering more intermediate level questions on arrays, right? So it is arrays practice question set number 5, right? Okay, so I am guaranteeing you, I am assuring you that these questions will raise your level of problem solving quite higher and you will get a good grip over problem solving by doing these questions, okay? These are very logical questions, right? That we will be covering in today, today's session, right? Okay. So let us move to the open board to discuss the first question. Okay. Okay. This is question number one. So yesterday, yesterday I taught you about how to reverse an array using reverse function. Okay. We have covered this question by using reverse inbuilt function. Reverse inbuilt function. We did this question by printing the array in reverse order. Not actually reversing the array, but printing the array in reverse order. In reverse order. Clear? Reverse order. And we did it manually. Manually reverse the array. We manually reversed the array. Array by two approaches. What were these two approaches? By using a swapping method. By using a swapping method. And by using temp variable which is a third variable technique temp variable okay so let me recall you about the code of yesterday's questions by using swap method how we did that question right so what we did we did this was the array so first pointer we have taken here let us say a second pointer we have taken at the last i call this as two pointer approach if you remember right Okay, the first pointer will be kept at the first index. Second pointer was kept at the last index. How I did that question earlier in the previous session? I kept this A to 0. I kept this B to N minus 1. That is the last index where N is the size of array. N is the size of array. Size of array. Right? Okay. So, my logic was while... A less than B. I told you. I told you very clearly. Why A less than B? Okay. Now you swap those. You swap something like this. ARR of A. ARR of B. This was the previous code that I already taught you yesterday. Okay. And now then you did a A plus plus B minus minus. It means after swapping this one with three, you move this I here forward and B as backward one step backward right this was the code that we have covered okay i want to teach you the optimized version of this code so today i want to teach you how to optimize this reverse code a, a, a very slight change and your code will be optimized further optimize means optimization refers to reduce the complexity of your program Suppose if you are using 50 variables, try to use 25 variables instead of that 50 variables. If you are using that some array to store something, try to use variables instead of this. This is, now, this is the optimization technique. Optimization means the resources that you are giving to your program, like here you are using two variables. Variable A, variable B. Try to reduce these two to one variable only. This is called as optimization when you are reducing the variable space, reducing some data structure space or uh, reducing number of loops in your code. It means you're, you're uh, condensing it, you're optimizing it, right? Okay, so how can you optimize? Can you think in your mind like how can you optimize this code? This is the same code that I'll be doing but in an optimized way. Yesterday we covered the, yesterday we covered this code. But now I will be showing you how to optimize it further, right? Okay. So, a hint to you is, just for 5 seconds think in your mind, hint is, can you, can you use just one variable instead of two? One variable, can you use just one variable instead of two? Like here you are using two variables, now. You are using variable A. Here, this pointer and you are using a variable B. Can you use only this A variable and not B? Can this work? Can this work? Yes, this can work. Yes, this can work. So, let me show you how. Okay, let me show you how. Okay. So, this is array. Suppose this is array 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let me explain you some concept first, right? 
This is the zeroth index. This is the first index. This is the second index. This is the third index. This is the fourth index. As simple as that. Okay. As simple as that. Okay. Now earlier you were keeping a pointer A on the zeroth index and a pointer B on the last index. And now I am saying you optimize this code by erasing this B pointer by not taking this B pointer. Erase this. Erase this. No, don't take this B pointer. Now you will say, okay, if I not take this B pointer, who will take care of this phi value? What to swap is taken care by A variable. With whom to swap, who will take care of this value? Who will point to phi to swap? Because for swapping, we need two variables. Okay. Two pointers we need to de de denote. Okay, we have to swap this A with this B. Now, if B is not present, if I am saying you to delete this B, who will take care of this last value? Who will take care of this last value 5? Let me tell you this question. Let me tell you, okay? Okay, cool. Okay, fine, fine. So now, A will be pointing same way as it was pointing earlier. Can you... Can you pinpoint, pinpoint index 4, index 4 with the help of this index 0? My question to you. This is my question to you. Can you pinpoint, can you point index 4 with the help of this 0? Where the n is the size of this array, this is 5. Can you do something like that? Can you obtain this index number 4 from this 0? There is a formula. There is a formula. N minus I minus 1. N minus I minus 1 is the formula to obtain 4 from this 0th index. What pair you are swapping? Okay. Wait. Let me erase everything and ask you a prior question before this. Okay. So in this, you are keeping a A here, you are keeping a B here, right? In the previous session. Now it means you are, you are swapping 0th index value with 4th index. You are swapping this value with this value, no? 4th index value with 0th index. Correct, correct. And then you are swapping this first index value with this third index, right? You are swapping like this. And then you are swapping 2 with 2 or stopping at here, okay? Stopping at here. This is not you doing. You are doing this because you are writing the code like I less than J. Okay, this can be ignorable. Okay, this is the pair that you were trying to swap earlier. This is the pair. You are trying to swap this zeroth index value with the fourth index, first index value with the third index. As simple as that. You are doing like this now. Okay. Now, if I give you, if I give you zeroth index, can you obtain this 4? Because now my B is not pointing to, to this 4. My B is not pointing to this 4 index. You, you are having just first index of the pair. Okay. You are not having 0, 4, 1, 3. You are having just 0. Can you obtain a 4 yourself? If I am not pointing any variable here at the fourth index, can you find this second, uh, this fourth index? 0 you already have. You know that you have to swap 0th value number with 4th index value. But I am not giving you this 4. I am say, saying you that you have been given 0. You have to find out this yourself. How can you do that? There is a formula. If you are having 0, there is a formula. n minus i minus 1. If I put the value, what is the value of n? What is the size of this array? 5. What is the ith value? It's 0 minus 1. What is 5 minus 0 minus 1? It's 4. It means from this 0, you obtained this 4. How can you obtain 1? How can you obtain this third index using 1? Because you have to swap 1 with 3, na? The value at index number 1, you have to swap this value with 3, na? So how will you obtain, how will you obtain 3 from this 1? Same formula, n minus i minus 1. Where n is 5, i is 1, minus 1. What is this? 5 minus 3, 5 minus 2. This is 3. It means you obtained 3 from this one. So, do you think, do you think is there an, is there really any need of the, the second value? Second variable. Is there any need of the second variable? My question to you. 
this was your array this was your array this was your array okay so these were the indices these were the indices right so earlier you are keeping a variable here and another variable you are keeping here right now i am asking you i am not giving you this b from this zero because you know that zeroth index value you have to swap with this fourth index i have given you index zero can you find out this index four by yourself like like i am giving you this formula arr of zero arr of zero with what in uh, with fourth index you have to swap this here you will come here here you will be putting a four but i am not say i am not giving you a pointer at this four i am asking you like which formula you will use here to get a four you will use something as n minus i minus one it means n minus zero minus one okay so this is how this is how with just one variable we are reversing the entire array can we code this up can we code this up okay let us code let us code this question let us code this question quickly let us code this question quick, quickly right this was the zero index this is this is first this is second this is third fourth right okay so just keep one variable a it means initializing this a with zero because in while loop definition or definition and initialization happens together initialization happens together okay while a less than now what will you write you will reach up to here okay you will reach up to here only okay or you will reach up to here so your a will be a less than n by 2 okay because i told you know that uh, when your pointer will come at 3 th there is no need to swap 3 with 3 I told you this thing now. There is no need to swap with three and three, so that's why you will break the loop at while coming at this after crossing this first index. Yesterday I already told you. So n is five divided by two is two, and you are saying a less than two. It means it is not even going to two. It is going to less than equal to one. It means it is going up to this index. See, I am highlighting it with blue boundary. It is going up to this index. Okay, that's why I did a n by two. You know, like earlier, what I was doing. Can you tell? Can you tell earlier which condition I was using? Earlier, I was using something like this: a less than b. But now I told you I am not taking this b. I am not taking this second variable. So it's like n by two, right? Open curly braces. What will you swap? Swap a r r of a with what? This is the twisting part. With what? ARR of how will you obtain the that index? This fourth index when zero is given, n minus a minus one, a minus one. Okay, and you are doing a a plus plus. What is the thing that is missing here? Earlier you were doing b minus minus also, but there is no b now. You are talking in terms of a. You have just taken one point, right? You are simply talking. You are simply talking in terms of a. You're simply talking in terms of a. That's why you're not using b minus minus, right? So let me dry run this code for you to show you how it works. Let me dry run this code for you to show how it works. Let me take a small array, otherwise it will create a mess over the board, right? Because the logic you have understood. Okay. So my a is pointing to zero. It means I am having my a at zeroth index. Now I'll be checking if my zero is less than two. Yes, it is less than two. Then take the entry inside the loop, while loop. Swap a r r of a. What is this a? It is zero. It means swap a r r of zero with what? With n minus a minus one. It means with five minus zero minus one. It means with fourth index. With fourth index. What? Sorry, n is now three here. I thought it is five. So n minus a minus one is three minus zero minus one. It is two. Okay, so I have to swap this zero with the second index because I have to swap this error with error two. From this formula, I obtained this. Obtained this. Okay, from this formula, I obtained two. Okay, so after swapping, it will become something like three will come here, one will come here. It will become something like three to one. Three to one, it will become right. Now I am doing a plus plus. It means I am reaching up to here. I am reaching up to here. A will point to here. Now again check if one less than two. Yes, again enter the loop. Swap this arr of one with whom? 
with the error of one. Why? Because your size is three, your a is one, and you are telling a one. It means three minus two is also one. It means you are swap swapping this two with itself. So there will be no effect. There will be no effect. It will be three to one only. Then your a will point to index number two. Now check is two less than two? No. It means you will not take entry inside the loop. It means you have, uh, you have. Break out of the loop at this point of time. You have bro, uh, like you have come out of the loop at this point of time, right? At this point of time. Fine. Okay. I hope that this logic is clear to you. Again, a little bit of description about what uh, approach I used. Again, a little bit of description. Suppose this is your zeroth index, first index, second, third, fourth. I am emphasizing this that n minus i minus one value logic here, right? Other other things you are clear. I know. Okay, so this is ten. This is twenty. This is thirty. This is forty. This is fifty. Earlier I was giving you two pointer. I am saying one pointer is here. One pointer is here. You swap this number with this number and this number with this number. So you were doing something like swap a r r of a comma a r r of b. Simply you were doing something like this, where a r is the name of the array. You are doing doing something like this, na? But now I I introduce you with a twist. I told that you will not point this b to the last index. You erase this b. You erase this b. Okay, you erase this b. You erase this b. You erase this b, right? Yeah, you erase this b. Now, now you are having this pointer a here, but you are not having any b to. You're not having any b. Your b is missing. How will you access the fourth index using this zeroth index? How will you access this third index using this first index? Because there is no b now here. Earlier it was like something. A is pointing to one. B was pointing to three. You are swapping a and b. But now there is no b. It means from this zero index you have to get this fourth index because zero and four are in a pair when it comes to swapping. And when it comes to swapping, see now you are swapping this with this, and with first index you have to obtain a third index because you are swapping third with uh, third with value with first. Okay, so this is the approach. So with zero, the formula is n minus i minus one, where i is zero. It means the size is five. Five minus zero minus one. Five minus one is four. It means with the help of this zero, you obtain this index number four. So there is no need to keep a pointer, put a pointer B on fourth index. With one, you can also achieve this three. How? N minus i minus one. I is one this time. It means five is the size i index one, and this five minus two, it is three. So with the help of this one, you have achieved this third index. So this is how you are not needing. You are not needing a second variable to. Uh, traverse it. Uh, it means it is reduced from a two-pointer approach, two-pointer approach to one-pointer approach. Earlier it was two-pointer. Why it is called two-pointer? Because you are using a and b pointers. That it is po pointing to zeroth index. It is pointing to fourth index here in this question. It means the end index. But now you have reduced to it to one-pointer problem. Why? Because you are just working with the a pointer, single pointer. You are not taking any other pointer. I hope that this approach is very much clear to you. Okay, this is the optimized version. Why it is called optimized? Because earlier you was using two variables. Now you reduce to one. Okay, okay. So this is optimized approach. This is optimized approach. Why optimized? Let me emphasize this one more. Why it is optimized? Why optimized? Because in your RAM, when you wrote this int a is equal to zero, int b, when you created two variables, these two variables have some place in the RAM. In the RAM, suppose these are storing somewhere here. When you are creating them, these are storing somewhere here. Earlier, this was a two-pointer approach, so these two variables are taking space in your RAM. Taking space in your RAM, in your RAM, that is random access memory, right? But now, when you did this question by one pointer, it means you erase this two, you erase this b. Then B is not taking any space in the RAM. B is not taking any space in the RAM. It means you freed the RAM space by one variable. It means it is optimized. Space is a resource. It means you have saved some resources. It means you have you have you have saved 
रिसोर्स टू वेस्ट रिसोर्स यू हैव सेव रिसोर्स ओके सपोज वॉटर इज नॉट सपोज वॉटर इज अ रिसोर्स वॉटर इज अ रिसोर्स वॉटर इज अ रिसोर्स इफ यू आर नॉट यूजिंग वन ग्लास ऑफ वॉटर इट मीन्स यू आर सेविंग दैट वॉटर ना यू आर सेविंग दैट वॉटर सेव इफ यू आर नॉट यूजिंग बी वेरिएबल इट मीन्स यू आर सेविंग द स्पेस ऑफ दिस बी इन द रैम बिकॉज बी इज नॉट ऑक्यूपाइड इन द रैम 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 मेमरी इज फ्री समहा विद वन ब्लॉक ओके सो रिसोर्सेज आर सेव्ड space is saved okay that's why it is optimized approach fine i hope this is clear to you this is the first question let us code it up let us code it up move to the dev c++ editor and code it up right let me move here okay so my array size was something like this now i am telling you one thing okay i am telling you one thing see see carefully one thing to before coding one thing again and again i am just giving some space and then i am creating a array of that particular space okay suppose i am explaining you with the variable size of 4 like this mistake happened in the explanation of uh, like 4 uh, to 5 minutes back that firstly i explained you with the five elements and then I, then i when i give you second example with this these elements only i took the size 5 i forgot to reduce its size by 3 because i thought that this was same example so size always allocating deallocating size always gives you problem so instead of manually writing this size 5 just use the formula of calculating the size okay i use the size formula every time when i code this is very hectic or tedious task to every time suppose i am explaining you with some array size 5 this is array element which are these are the five elements of the array right and now one person came and asked okay perform it with seven elements now seven elements but i forgot to change this size to seven and it is causing problem and i then i uh, lo look at it okay i have to do this seven uh, this seven size as seven again if someone came explain with three elements again and again i am check i am changing this size to three so instead of doing that simply write as many el as elements in the array one two something like that and just calculate the size afterwards like don't first give the size of the array and then compute then perform calculations just create the array with as many elements and then calculate the size automatically okay it is a it is very good technique to always calculate the size afterwards so what is the formula to create uh, calculate the size i already explained you it is size of size of arr divided by size of arr0 this is a formula that i am using again and again okay right so you will not forget the forget to change the size of the array again and again when you are taking different examples see this thing i am doing here so i am not writing this in 10 is equal to something okay so i am definitely writing in arr 1 2 3 4 5 okay now how do i calculate the size size of arr by size of arr0 arr0 right okay now just keep one pointer a at zeroth index while while a less than n by 2 while a less than n by 2 swap arr of a arr of a with arr of n minus a minus 1 now do a, a plus plus now let us print this array to show if it is actually reversed or not see out see out arr of i okay let us see if it actually got reversed or not okay fine who the output is getting uh, completed like uh, okay so we are getting the reversed array here see this array this is reversed this is coming as something 5 4 3 2 1 it means our code worked by one variable so what is the need of using two variables right work smartly work smartly right okay fine cool okay this question was done this question was completed so let us move to let us move to the second question of the day let us move to the second question of the day right okay so so 
the second question is the second question is the second question is let me raise it off check uh, this question will come in this form check if a string is palindrome or not if a string is palindrome or not if a string is palindrome or not but as i have not taught you this concept till now string concept we will be we will be covering it after arrays numbers and then string third topic since i have not as i have not taught this topic to you that's why we will not be taking uh, checking palindromic in the string we will be checking the array is palindrome or not okay instead of uh, uh, actually this question is something check if a string is palindrome or not but we have not covered uh, the string data structure that's why we will be checking if array is palindrome or not because the main logic is to check what uh, check the properties of palindrome it doesn't matter if you are checking an array as a palindrome or a string as a palindrome the main concern is about knowing what do you mean by palindrome this is the main word that we have to cover the logic we have to understand whether it is applied applicable to string or array it is a it is a side thing or the second thing okay firstly we have to understand what is the logic of this palindrome because if you can perform the palindromic uh, function on uh, arrays uh, you can cover it with string as well the main thing is about this word okay so let us let us quickly discuss about what is palindrome and move further right check if an array check if an array let me write very small otherwise it is going to cover every single block on the board right okay check check if an array if an array possess possess or shows palindromic properties or not palindromic properties or not palindromic nature or not okay palindromic nature or not i have written in you know it in a fancy language but it is simply saying check if an array is palindrome or not right okay okay so suppose suppose i am giving i have given some array or i am giving you some array it is 1 2 1 1 okay so this is the array that i have given to you you have to check if it is showing palindromic properties or not right so firstly let us understand what do you mean what do i mean by palindromic palindromic is suppose this is a string this is a string this is some name some name this is some name uh this is some name palindromic means if you are writing it from starting if you are writing it if you are reading it from here or you are reading it in reverse order it should it should it should sound the same it should sound the same sound the same same right if you are reading it from starting if you are or if you are reading it up from end to start or start to end it should it should sound the same it should be pronounced it should be pronounced as as same pronunciation should be same right how you pronounce is should be same and spelling is also should be same spelling spelling and pronunciation pronunciation should be same like for example for some example for some example suppose i am giving you suppose i am giving you a karan a karan yeah suppose it is a okay let me take some other example because opposite will be something as narak so that's why let let me take some a uh, uh, good example okay let me take a uh, let me take some example which is riya let me take this example riya riya okay riya so when i am reading it when i am pronouncing it from from, from this from front to back it is sounding as riya and when i am pronouncing it from back to front back to backward to forward it is sounding as it is pronounced being pronounced as air air right so when you read it from starting it's it sounds like ria when you when you pronounce it from backwards it sounds like air it means it is not matching it it is not matching because it is not sounding the same from both the directions let us take some uh, uh, some example which is sounding the same right let us same, take some example suppose madam 
मैडम मैडम और मैम मैम वेन यू आर रीडिंग इट फ्रॉम हियर इट इज एम ए एम मैम एंड वेन यू आर रीडिंग इट फ्रॉम बैक इट इज ऑल्सो इट इज द सेम मैम एम ए एम ओके इट मीन्स इट इज स्पेल इन रोम इट इज स्पेल इन रोमिक इन नेचर इट इज स्पेल इन रोमिक इन नेचर इन नेचर राइट एंड वेन यू प्रोनाउंस दिस इट इज मैडम एम ए डी ए एम मैडम एंड वेन यू रीड इट फ्रॉम बैक इट इज साउंडिंग सेम एम ए डी ए एम एम ए डी एम फ्रॉम फ्रंट एम ए डी एम फ्रॉम बैक सो इट इज स्पेल इन रोम अनदर एग्जाम्पल इज नितिन नितिन ओके नितिन वेन यू आर रीडिंग इट फ्रॉम हियर इट इज एन आई टी आई एन नितिन एंड वेन यू आर रीडिंग इट फ्रॉम बैक इट इज सेम एन आई टी आई एन नितिन ओके दिस इज अल इन रोम दिस इज अल इन रोम आई होप यू क्लियर विद द meaning of this term palindrome because when some when some word is given to you in the question and you're not aware of its meaning now you cannot solve this question okay and that's why i taught you this okay palindrome now based on your knowledge that i uh, that you gained from my explanation when i was explaining you the palindromic meaning can you tell if is this array is this array is palindromic in nature or not is this array is palindrome palindromic in nature or not can you tell this can you think in your mind see read it from starting 1 2 1 read it from back 1 2 1 it is it is sounding the same it is sounding the same it means it is palindromic in nature as simple as that it is palindromic in nature but suppose there is some array which is 1 2 3 pronounce it from starting read it from starting it is 1 2 3 read it from back it is 3 2 1 it is not palindromic because the words are different okay the numbers are different from uh, as we read it from front to back and back to front right so it is not palindromic this is how the how to check palindromic with no with integers okay we have checked it with string now now i also showed you with integers so that it is easy for you to code this question up right okay i hope that this thing is fine for you okay so now so now how you will code it up how will you proceed with the algorithm of this how to code it up okay let me give you some hint let me give you some hint it will be requiring it will be requiring it will be requiring two pointer approach requiring two pointer approach two pointer approach and i told you how to convert this two pointer approach into one pointer approach into one pointer approach this question is same as the reversing in array quite same 95% reversing in array, array this questions are same the logic is same the uh, the traversals are same the logic is different that particular thing swap instead of swap you have to write something else otherwise it is same right okay so first of all first of all can you tell if i am giving you some string as nitin if i am giving you some string as nitin where this is the zeroth index this is first this is second this is third this is fourth you are keeping one pointer here you are keeping another pointer here this is two pointer i will i will be giving you one pointer approach as homework right it will be same right as i uh, explained you about this n minus i minus 1 same right okay so up to where up to where the condition will fall up to where you will check where you will take you will take up to a equals to b because you know like what actually you will do in this question you will check if this n matches with this n earlier you were swapping 0 and 4 1, 3 but now you have to check if value at this zeroth index is same as fourth index because if this word is same with this then then they can be pronounced as uh, same na from front and back if they are actually same if mam is there if this ma this m is not equal to this then this cannot be pronounced na okay suppose this is man this m this is n it is not a palindrome because the zeroth index value is not equal to the last index value so it cannot be pronounced as same because this is different so you have to check if this zeroth index value if this zeroth index value uh, if this zeroth index value is matching with this fourth index if this first index value is matching with this then only you can pronounce it in the same way from front and back if it is equal by half if the half part is equal if the half part is equal right then only you can pronounce it like this na understanding what i am saying understanding what i am saying let me emphasize emphasize it once more 
सपोज दिस इज नितिन दिस इज नितिन दिस इज जीरो दिस इज फॉर सेकेंड थर्ड फोर्थ एंड एक्स राइट ओके सो इन ऑर्डर टू प्रोनाउंस इट सेम फ्रॉम बैक एंड दिस यू हैव टू चेक इफ दिस इज इक्वल टू दिस because when you are reading it from starting you are start reading from n n and if you have if you want this to be palindrome then this this n should be here also at the last this these two values should match this value and this value should match that's why you can that's how you can pronounce it uh, the same from back now if this is matching this i should match with this i and this is t it is same okay it is same suppose if there is there is some other string and i t t i n it means this should be equal to this then only it can be matched then it only can be matched this n should match with this this i should match with this i this t should match with this t okay getting a clarity over the concept the first char should match the last the first second the, uh, the second char should match the last second this is nitin it means it means the first character should match the last character the first char should match the last char the second char should match the last second second should match the last second last second okay last second third should match the last third last third fourth should match the last fourth character it means this should match with this this should match with this this should match with this this should match this is single this is single though there is no need because it is one so not causing a problem for palindromic okay another example to show you something to show you something suppose i am writing nitrin nitrin i am writing okay nitrin i am writing although this is matching with this Although this is matching with this i, but this t is not matching with this r. T is not matching with this r. It means this is not a palindrome. Palindrome. The same logic. The same logic that I explained you. Uh, when I explained you this question, na check if two arrays are equal or not. Check if two arrays are equal or not. No matter if ninety nine elements are equal and one is not equal, that that one will bring the impact. Okay, if two arrays are of hundred character, hundred size, then all hundred elements should match with each each other. Then then only we can say that these arrays are same. I explained you know this thing. Same way, every first character should match with its last. Every second should match with its second last. Every third should match with its third last. If any one is not matching, it means the string is not palindrome. The string is not palindrome. This is my simple logic to this question, right? Suppose you are having hundred characters. Suppose you are having ten characters. These are the ten characters: five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These are the ten characters. This is matching with this. 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 Then let me draw one more. Oh, this is ten, no? One second, one second. Let me write it again. I wanted to show you something actually. okay this is the last uh, logic that i am explaining and afterwards we will be coding it up right 10 elements suppose i am taking 1 2 3 4 5 right so this element should match with this last element with this last element second element should match with second last third element should match with third last fourth element should match with fourth last and this should match with this suppose this is matching this is also matching this is also matching this is also matching but one pair is not matching with each other these two are not matching it means the string is the old string is not palindrome although the four pairs are matching with each other but due to the one pair not matching the string the entire string is declared as not palindrome it means it is compulsory that every should be everyone should match not a one person should not match this is not the thing right okay so let us code it up i have uh, i have covered every concept about palindromic thing i have covered it with elements and with strings and cars everything okay so let us let us check if this is palindrome or not suppose it is 1 to 1 okay 1 to 1 this is the zero zero the next this is the first this is second one pointer is kept here one pointer is kept it here so how to 
proceed with the code int a is put at 0 int b is i am putting at second index i am using a while loop while a less than b same logic a plus plus b minus minus as you were doing same logic right if 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 at if they are matching if let us suppose this if this is matching with this nothing to nothing you have to do move further move further move further but if it is not matching then return false and come out of the loop break out of the loop because no need to check for others because if it is one is one pair is not matching then there is no need to check others because if one is not matching and 99 pairs are matching and one is not matching even after this majority the string is not palindromic it is not considered to be palindromic all should match it is compulsory that all should match right okay if arr of a is not equal to arr of b if it is not matching with arr of b see out false just print a false and break out of the loop no need to check further we are not concerned we are not caring if others are matching or not but that one pair is not matching due to which every every string characters considered as guilty something like that guilty of not forming the string to be palindrome right okay okay fine fine okay so because one pair was not matching every every character every pair is declared as false that you are also not matching like they were matching but due to one pair the string is not considered as palindromic due to just one person pair okay it is you know like it this situation is something like that this situation is something like that uh like uh, these are the parents these are the parents and these parents have three kids and they have to go to some tour uh to tour uh, at goa like they have to go to goa they their school trip is going to goa right this parent this children con convinced both this convinced both parents told parents told that parents told that this their parents said if you have done your homework you can go you three can go parents put a condition parent parents kept a condition that if you have also done your homework then you can go this child has not completed his homework this has not completed his homework his homework and parents said that okay you three are not going dear kids you are not going to goa because one among you has not completed the homework then afterwards you know what will happen afterwards you know like what will happen this and this will blame this this person this will also blame that because of you because of you parents denied to send us to goa trip because of you we have done our homework but because of you it so it is the same situation that it is the same situation that it is the same situation that this is a string this is an array whatever it is this is matching with this which is causing the array to become palindrome this is also matching with this which which is also causing and forcing the array to become palindrome but this was not matching with this due to this pair only the string denied to become a palindrome or the, the array denied to possess palindromic properties then these pairs are will be blaming this that because of you not matching we all are not considered as palindromic okay so this is same situation just an analogy i have given from real life okay so my main concern is to show you that even after one pair is not matching now the whole string suffers the whole array suffers the whole array is not declared as uh, palindrome right okay so this is the logic this is the logic right instead of this swap you just checked something this was the change only right so let us move to the editor to code this question up let us move to the editor to code this question up so one thing more let me explain you about the one thing same here you are checking if arr of a not equal to arr of b can you tell me how can you optimize this with two pointer approach with uh, from two pointer to the one pointer approach can you tell me can you tell me instead of b what you can write instead of b what you can write you can write something as n minus a minus 1 and this condition you can change as n by 2 and this b q you can erase these are the three changes okay so now let us proceed to code to editor to code it up right okay 
so instead of this swapping you have to do something like this if arr of a is not matching with the arr of b if they are matching we have no problem but if they are not matching then there is some twist c out falls c out falls and break no need to check further because the the situation is out of control now right the situation is out of control because what how how many how, how much efforts you put the string cannot become palindrome because one pair failed to match with each other right okay okay let me run this code and check if it is palindrome or not oh i am not taking a b i am taking n minus a minus 1 right okay cool see it is showing false why it is showing false why it is showing false because your array is not palindrome it is 1 2 3 4 5 suppose i am doing something my array is 1 2 1 1 2 1 now let us see let us see what it will give it will not give false it means it is true right it is not printing uh, u false it means array is palindrome okay fine okay this is the entire logic now you will say we have to print true for when it is palindrome but the editor the output is showing nothing okay now you can change something like this what you can do in your code you can maintain a bool boolean flag value boolean flag value which is boolean flag value and when you find a false you can store this flag this false in this flag like that okay you can store this false in this flag and then break and then at the end check if flag is false if flag is false it means it is not palindromic you can return not palindromic okay else if flag is true else see out palindromic palindromic okay palindromic right okay so even for one to one it is showing palindromic you have to initialize this with true right initialize this flag with true let me tell you this why why it happened who it is saying palindromic now you know like what happened what just happened when you were uh, when you were uh, doing some questions on uh, when you were doing some questions about uh, that when i told you to search the first occurrence and the last occurrence you remember that you initialize this answer variable with minus 1 it means if some answer came then this one will be overrided by the index value index of the first occurrence of some number otherwise it will be minus 1 only so same way when you are using this bool flag remember initialize it with the true okay if at some point of time the string is false the string is not palindrome then you are storing this flag with false it means this true will be overrided by that false and when you will be printing that flag uh, checking with that flag it will easily check it is easily checking it right so initialize it with some value generally we used to initialize this flag with true because we always assume that something is true and if it is false in case then this true will be overrided by some part of the code when you, we will be moving inside this if condition we are checking now if it is not matching then flag is equal to false so if we are entering this if condition then this true will be overrided by false otherwise it will be true only okay right so this way we can show true and false for matching and not matching both earlier we were just printing false for if false for it uh, for the situation when it was not matching but we are not doing anything for the true now we are doing for the true also right okay fine fine so now so now this is the question that we have already done now is the third question now is the turn for the third question and this question is very interesting and it is very important it is some dsa sheets of some youtubers it means it is very important and it will teach you plenty of concepts 
it will teach you plenty of concepts believe me plenty of concepts it will teach you right okay so let us let us move towards this question this is question number three today i remember how many questions we have done okay so we have done first question where we have reversed the array using one pointer only optimizing it and then second question where we checked whether an, an array possess palindromic properties or not right this is segregate segregate 0 1 2 in an array in an array segregate 0 1 and 2 in the array segregate 0 1 and 2 in the array right segregating 0 1 2 now there is some array given there is some array given this array is 0 1 2 1 2 0 1 2 you have to make it something like this that at first all zeros will come after that all ones will come and then after that all twos will come this is how segregation means this is how segregating means this is segregation that firstly you put all zeros then you are putting all ones together then you are putting all twos together you are putting all twos together this is how what uh, what i mean by segregation let us give some real life example of uh, showing what segregation actually means segregation segregation means to separate mixing of elements to separate elements from getting mixed now you can see that when i gave you this array 0 1 2 1 uh, 2 1 0 something like that 0 1 and 2 are mixed with each other these are mixed with each other mixed with each other okay these are mixed with each other because there is zero then we have one then two then two then one then zero so we have segregated it it means we have separated filtered out this one one uh, one side and this two and then this like this okay we did something like that okay i hope you're clear with the meaning of segregation you're clearing with the meaning of segregation okay one thing is one thing is suppose uh, like what happens segregation real life example of segregation is a uh, real life example of segregation is this is this is the dumping ground this is dumping ground suppose uh, some uh, somebody is coming uh, to your colony to collect the garbage from each house garbage garbage from each house garbage from each house okay each house now this garbage contains lot of thing it will contains bottles nuts peels of vegetables peels of vegetables vegetables banana something like that okay so what garbage collector what what the authority or what the uh, concerned persons will do they will segregate this garbage to decompose them in a nice manner so that it can be turned into something productive so they will be segregating they will segregate this peels to decompose it to form the to form the plant feed plant feed khad we used to call it as, call it as khad okay plant matter plant feed right they will segregate the bottles for some things uh, for uh, recycling them recycling them they will segregate these these nuts to remanufacture them re remanufacture them like uh, we have some uh, uh rusting here on these nuts so they prepare them fresh okay by removing that rusting something like that so this is what is happening here this is segregation Se segregation going on segregation going on segregation means the the similar things are kept at one place nuts are the plastic the uh, steel things or the uh, steel things are kept at one place and the vegetable peels are kept at one place for decomposition remanufacture recycling so this is the segregation that happens in real life the garbage is segregated because different types of garbage uh, uh, is co getting collected from colonies and now it is getting segregated to turn into it something productive decomposition recycling something like that okay so this is the meaning of segregation same way your numbers are mixed with each other numbers are mixed with each other one two zero zero one something like that what you have to do you have to segregate it segregate it okay 
so first form first way to it is also having multiple ways it is also having some approach number 1 approach number 2 approach number 3 it is also having some multiple approaches approach number 4 okay so it is also having some multiple approaches yeah it is also having multiple approaches right now as it is having multiple approaches we will discuss few approach and then code some other approaches the optimized approach we will code right and the second the uh, the basic approach i'll only tell you very nicely so that I, and i will give you this homework to you so that you can try it yourself let me write it up this is two only three elements you have to this is three elements only right okay this is one this is zero right so first approach is count the number of zeros count the number of zeros count the number of ones count the number of twos i will be explaining this approach and you will be doing it as a homework right so count the zeros how many zeros are there in this array how many ones are there how many twos are there suppose zeros are how many zeros are there can you count it with me two zeros are there zeros are two how many ones are there one two three three ones are there how many twos are there two twos are there okay now run a loop and print this zero two times firstly print this zero two times because its frequency is two i told you the frequency is the number of times it appears in array one is appearing three times put three ones here two is appearing two times put two one uh, two twos here this is how you segregated 0 1 and 2 this is how you segregated 0 1 and 2 you can segregate it something like uh, keeping one first and then 0 0 then 2 2 or keeping two first then 1 1 1 0 0 any way you can do but the, this is a general way this is a general way okay this is a general way that first all z small then uh, quite larger then quite larger sorting ascendingly it means segregating ascendingly so this is the first method this is the first method and this is a homework to you that i told you each and everything just step by step do it this thing i have already told you how to count count something you count the one how many ones are there how many uh, zeros are there ones are there twos are there then put those many zeros those many ones those many twos accordingly print it this is the first approach this is the first approach right approach number 1 and this is homework to you this is homework to you so this is a homework to you okay now second approach is second approach is my dear student second approach is when you will sort this array this is second approach first one is homework this is second approach when you will sort this array you will get something like this when you will sort it you will get something like this it means by just one line by one line you have segregated this array because you know what sorting does it will put all the smaller elements together then quite larger elements then larger than previous ones ascending order it will sort or descending whatever it is generally ascending right so what you will you write to sort this array sort arr comma arr plus n this is the formula this is the formula include header file algorithm hash include algorithm or write bits std whatever you want wish to okay where arr is the name of the array and n is the size of the array arr is the name of the array n is the size of the array this is the formula this sort function will sort your array it will do make your array something like this appear like this where zeros are at once then second then uh, then ones are there then twos are there this is a second approach this is a second approach of segregating 0 1 to n in an array i hope that this approach is also clear to you it, it is a one liner approach it is inbuilt just you have used some inbuilt function to to uh, get this question done right okay let us proceed further for the main and the important approach that you have to do this is the most important approach this is the this is the ultimate optimized approach for this question this is the ultimate approach for this question this is this approach is known as uh, like in programming world there are there are some algorithms and approaches that have some famous names this is known as dutch 
नेशनल फ्लैग एल्गोरिदम डच नेशनल फ्लैग एल्गोरिदम डच नेशनल फ्लैग एल्गोरिदम दिस अप्रोच इज नोन एज समथिंग लाइक दिस समथिंग लाइक दिस डच नेशनल फ्लैग फ्लैग एल्गोरिदम आर यू एक्साइटेड टू सी विद मी लाइक हाउ इट वर्क्स एक्चुअली दिस इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग यू विल गेट डायरेक्टली दिस इन टू योर हेड इन वन गो आई एम अश्योरिंग यू दैट बी अ विद मी फॉर सम टाइम राइट आई एल बी मेकिंग शो दैट दिस विल बी कवर्ड नाइसली ओके लेट एस प्रोसीड फॉर्दर लेट एस प्रोसीड फॉर्दर let me erase this thing so that we can get more space to write on the open board right okay okay so now so now um okay this was a your array 02120012 okay let me write some index value here 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 You will be using a three-pointer technique here. Three-pointer technique, three-pointer approach here, where you will be taking the first pointer as name as A or any name. You will be keeping keeping it at zeroth index. This is the algorithm. You know, like what is the uh, meaning of algorithm? It means you have to learn the steps. You have to understand the steps. Okay, this will be new for you, but you have to understand the logic behind it. Understand the steps, how it will be working. and make it a make a b pointer pointing to the last index that you did in two pointer approach now you will be taking a three third pointer which is also pointing to the zeroth index it means two pointer are there which is pointing to the zeroth index and one pointer is there b which is putting pointing to the sixth index last index earlier you did this question by two pointer where you are using just two you are you you have used just two variables one is a one is b but now here a new variable also came in the picture that is c variable okay so this is the initial thing now now the main logic is of this c you have to see like what value you have to basically see what value this c is storing this c is storing this c is storing okay a will take care of a will take care of a will take care of zeros b will take care of twos and this c will take care of ones if you will segregate it you will get something like this you will get something like this this is lows area this is a's area this is b's area and this is c's area c's variable area right okay so a will take care of putting zeros at one place b will take care of putting l at uh, all two as second uh, at uh, one place and uh, c will pay attention to putting that ones at one place in the middle right okay so now let me this this part okay let me actually write this array in a bigger way so that we can we can move here very nicely let me take only smaller values small size array because big will be very difficult to uh traverse and it occupies entire board right so this is the zeroth index this is the first this is second this is third this is fourth here is your here you here is your a pointing here is your c pointing and here is your b pointing right okay fine now now this c will move only this c will move only and come into action every time first thing whenever the c finds any zero it will swap it it will swap itself with a because C will say, "Hey, A, hey, 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 I found your number. You are the person, na, who is taking care of all the zeros. I found zero. I told you na, that this C will travel in the area. This C will only travel. A will be here, B will be here. They will be moving at some time, but C will be traversing as a whole in the area, right? It will be traversing in the area. It will be traversing in the area." so when this c encounter a zero when this c c will encounter a zero it will say hey a i found you i found a zero 
I know that I came to know that you are taking care of all zeros. A will say, yes, yes, give that zero to me. Give that zero to me. How it will give? This zero will be swapped. The value at A, uh, C will be swapped with the value at, value at A. This is how C will hand over this zero to A. Fine. When we will be uh, dry running it, now, you will be getting clarity. Don't worry. Second scenario, when C will find one, C will not tell anything because C knows that one is the number that I am taking, I am supposed to take care of. So it will not give this to anyone. Third situation, when C find a two, when C finds a two, it will call, hey B, hey B, I found a two and I came to know that you are taking care of all the twos. We will say, yeah, yeah, give that two, two to me. Give that two to me. Yes, I am taking care of all the twos at uh, keeping them together at one place. So we will swap whatever value is at C to with the whatever value is at B. Because this C's value means it is two. So it is swapped with the B's value. And B is at B is at the last. So two will be shifted at the last. Right? Okay. So just keep in mind these three scenarios and let us proceed further towards the algorithm. Let us proceed further towards the algorithm. Let me raise the entire screen to write bigger. Right? Let us proceed. Let us proceed. This is 1. This is 0. This is 2, 1, 0. Right? This is this is 0 then next. This is 0. This is 1st. This is 2nd. This is 3rd. This is 4th. A is kept at here. B is kept at here. And C, uh, sorry, B is kept at here. C is kept at here. C is kept at here. Now, C says, okay, my value is 1. It means I am, hand, I am supposed to take care of this value. So, it will do nothing. It will just move further. Why this C will move further? Because if first at 0th index, it found a 1. And it has nothing to do with this 1. Because this 1 only belongs to this. This one belongs to this C only. Now, when it will go to first index, it will encounter a zero. Now, it will say, hey, Z, hey, 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 I know that you are supposed to take care of this zero value. Please take this. How it will take? Swap, swap, ARR of A, whatever value is at A, with swap, ARR with C. Now, it means zeroth index value will be swapped with first index. What is what is there at 0th index? 1. What is there at 1st uh, index? 0. Okay. So, these values will be swapped. These values will be swapped. After swapping, it will become something like 0, 1, 2, 1, 0. Rest array, entire array is same. The rest of the array is same. Only these values swapped with each other. This value and this value swapped with each other. After swapping, you know what will happen? Low will move ahead and mid will move ahead. This, sorry. A will move ahead and C will move ahead, right? Because they have done their part. Now, A will come to here and this mid will come to here. This, uh, sorry, this C will come to here. I did it with low, mid and high name as uh, variable in. That's why I am again and again saying low and mid, okay? Once I'll be completing with the entire algorithm, now I am making sure that you will be clearing it up, right? C. Okay, because this value is swapped with this value. Now they proceeded further. Okay, now C is pointing to, now you know that at the end of the index, there is a B located. C is pointing to 2. C points to 2. C will say, hey, I found something as 2. I know that B, hey B, I know that you are the person who is supposed to take care of that all the Bs together. B will say, yes, yes, give that value to me. So what we will do? We will do swap ARR of whatever is present at C, that is 2 to the whatever is present at the B. So, this value, this 0 will be swapped with this C. This B's value will be swapped with this C. Oh, it is getting messing, messed up. Let me do it clear. This was 1, this was 0. Let me take, let me take few values. It is getting covered by, the entire board is getting covered. Let me do it very simply. Let me do something. Let me do something. Instead of taking that in like this, like every time when I am taking like this, no? Like this and comma, it is getting mixed up. It is getting messed up and mixed up. So let me just simply write the variables without comma and without everything, right? 0, 1, 2, 1. Okay. 
so a is kept at here c is kept at here b is kept at here see now how it is looking clear how clear it is looking now right okay this is fourth index c is pointing to zeroth index whose value is 1 c knows that i am the person who is supposed to take care of this one so i will not do anything i'll just simply move forward no need to swap with anybody because c is only i am holding this one my responsibility is only to hold that one value so nothing to swap swap with only with the values that i have to hand over to somebody now it encountered a zero c is pointing here c sees that okay i am at some first index which is having a value zero c will remember c will call a hey a hey a i know that you are supposed to take care of this zero value please take it how it will take it how it will take it this value is swapped with this value when it will be swapped the array will look something like this 0 1 1 2 1 it will look something like this and after swapping a will move forward c will move forward a will move forward c will move forward right so this is how a moved forward and c moved forward this is zero index this is first second third so these two values are swapped with each other okay these two values are swapped with each other these two values are swapped with each other zero came here two came here okay zero came here two came here now c will move one step ahead and one a will move one step ahead this is the algorithm this you have to learn you have to understand no alternate solution for this okay i'm explaining at my best okay now c will come here and see oh i have one whom i hand over this one hey one is my responsibility now so there is no need to swap this thing with anybody because this is my responsibility now this c will move further this c will move further and see oh I got a 2, I got a 2. It means there is B. So I have to hand over this 2 to B because I know that B is the person who is taking care of this 2. So he will tell B, hey B, I have 2 and I know I have listened that I have came to know that I have come to know that you are the person who is taking care of 2s. So please swap this 2 with me. So B and C will get swapped and this will this array will become something like this 1, 2 because because this value is swapped with this value this was c this was b they got swapped they were like two one now they become one two now they came became one two these two swapped with each other okay now after doing this mid will move plus plus and uh, no mid will not move plus plus high will move one minus one because after arranging at two at the end high will uh, that uh, b will move one step backward because it has already put a two at the end so there is no need to replace any one with this last two because two is supposed to be at end when it is sorted when it is segregated you know how it is segregated it is, it is segregated something like this so two is two is present at the end and with, when some two is present at the end is is put is put to the end then there is no need for uh, sticking to that Two move ahead. B will move one step ahead. B will be like, okay, one two I have put at the end. Now I have to fill this second last position with some other two. Fill this third last position with some other two. This is a this is a nature of how B is behaving. And one is you know like how A is behaving. A's goal is to put all zeros at the front. When A has put one zero at the first position, A will move further with mid. Why? Because it want to fill this first position with another zero if there is another zero in the array if there is not then one will come because when all zeros will end then one will start then two will start this is how segregation going on now okay so this is a simple algorithm this is a simple algorithm and one thing to notice is one thing to notice is one thing to notice is when this low value this is this is a and this is c c notice that i have zero and i know that a is taking care of that zero let us swap this zero with a so a and c are swapped with each other it means one it was one zero now after swapping it became one zero one at this point of time a also moved and c also moved because zero is put at its correct position now a will think okay one zero is I have put uh, one zero at the first position. Now let us move further. Because in future if you will swap A and C, you will make sure that this zero will not get replaced 
or misplaced because it is now at its correct position it is now at its correct position so no need to touch no need to trigger this zero that's why low moved that's why low moved but when b and c swapped c uh, b and c swapped b moved backwards because it has put two that two at the last position it has put this two at the last position okay it has put this two as the last position now b will think okay i have put my two at the last position now whatever next two if another two i will get i will put it to the second last position that's why b moved b minus minus ahead backward one step backward because it will not b will think okay i have put one to the to, to the end i will not touch this i will not trigger this because it is at its correct position another true that i will be getting by this uh, from this c when this c will say me uh, say that hey b hey b take your two then i will take this two and put it at the second last position then i will move again b minus minus i will move again forward one step backward if another two this c will give me another two i will put, put it at third last index i'll again move back okay so the conclusion from this logic is this is a difficult question i know this is a difficult question maybe at the first time you will not get clarity this is a this is c and this is b when this c will give something to a na zero to a then a will put zero here and move a plus plus because if next time c will hand over zero some other zero to this a na a will put it at second position because first position is already occupied with a zero which is correct no need to touch it if c will give any third zero na it will be put it at the third position because no need to touch these two values these are at correct position and a will move further similarly when b will get some two by a na b will put it at last position when c will give some other second two to the to this b it will put it at second this last second position because you know na segregation means something like this where twos are put it at the last zeros are putting being getting put it at the uh, starting if a is taking care of zero to put at first uh, first positions and b is taking care of putting all those two at the last then automatically these ones will be coming in the middle this ones will be coming in the middle okay it means there are three roll numbers and there are three students roll number 1 occupied by first student roll number 3 occupied by third student one seat left it is it is sure that second student uh, will definitely acquire this second seat because others two have occupied their respective roll numbers and only this seat is left only this seat is left this seat is left which is occupied by this left out person so if the conclusion is the conclusion is if this a is getting taking responsibilities of putting all zeros at the starting if this b is taking all responsibilities to put as zeros this two as the end at the end then definitely one will be coming at the middle this is how the segregation will work whenever c will encounter z zero it will hand this zero hand over this zero to the a take your zero by swapping whenever c will encounter two it will give this two to the b by swapping that take your two and whenever it will found a one it will not do anything it will simply move ahead because one it plays at the correct position this is a simple logic of this question this is a simple logic of this question i hope this is clear to you i hope this is clear to you now let me again explain you one more time with very slow to tone and very slowly proceeding for the right so that this is the final time you can get this question into your head mm. this is the zero index this is the first this is second this is third this is fourth a is present here c is present here b is present the last see the algorithm carefully C C is okay. Zeroth index element is zeroth index element is one. I don't have to do anything because it is placed 
where it's supposed to be because it is C. It is one and I have to take care of this one. So C will move further to this. C will see, okay, now I encountered a zero. It means I have to hand over this zero to the A. It means swap this A and C values. After swapping, this will become zero one and rest will be as it is. Rest will be as it is. Now, when zero is placed to its, at its correct position, this A will move forward. This C will move forward. This A will move forward. This A will move forward and this C will move forward. A reached here, C reached here. They moved A++ and C++ when 0 is kept at the correct position. Why A moved? Because it has already placed that some, one, some 0 at the first position. Now A will move. Because in future if A have to swap with C, then this value should be swapped with C. Not this value should be touched because it is placed at position at the correct index, right? Okay, fine. Fine, this question is fine, okay. Now C encounters a 2 and he knows, this is Bina, he knows that, he knows that, he knows that, C knows that B is the person who is supposed to take care of this 2. So C will hand over this 2, B to, uh, this 2 to B by swapping it with B. Swap value at C with value at B. Now these two values will be swapped with each other. After swapping, it will be something like 0, 1, 2, 1, 2. Nothing changed because it, the value with which it was swapped, it is also a 2. So after swapping 2 to 2, it will, uh, this 2 will come here, this 2 will go here, but nothing changed. This time, this B will move for back backward one step because it knows that it has positioned the 2 at its correct position. Now, it has to move backward so that this 2 will not be touched in future. But this C will not move. This C will not move. Why? Because C is still carrying a 2. C is still carrying a 2. So, this, this C will not move. Why this C will not move? Because after swapping also, this C is carrying a 2. Because this was 2, C was here, B was here. When this C and B swapped, when this, these two values swapped, this 2 came here, this 2 gone here. Still it is 2, 1, 2 only. Still it is 2, 1, 2. Still it is 2, 1, 2. Now B will move one step backward. B will move one step backward because it has kept the 2 at the correct position. But C will not move ahead because C is still having this 2. It has to fix this 2 to the rightmost. Rightmost. Okay, this is the entire logic. I hope now this question is clear to you. Okay, now I hope that this question is clear to you. Let me write the code. Okay, it is kept at 0. B is kept at 0 uh, at n minus 1. That is the last index, not 0, sorry. C is kept at 0 while C less than B. Why? Because C is traversing in the array. C is ahead. C is traversing. So, we have a feeling that C will not overcross or override this beast. That's why while C less than B. Because whatever is, because in uh, two-pointer approach, you know that this is A, this is B. A is moving towards B. So, we have written something like A less than B. Now, we know that in this, where A is there, C is there and B is there, C is traversing. So, we have a, uh, we have a uh, tension that, uh, we have a tension that C will not override this B. We have a, not actually tension of this, but we are having a concern that C will not override B. That's why we will write the condition like this, C less than B. So, we will write the condition something as C less than B, right? C less than B. Open the curly braces, open the curly braces and write something like this. If ARR of C encountered a 0, then swap it, hand over it to A. How? Swap ARR of C with ARR of B. ARR of A, sorry, because it knows that A, will, A is the right person. A plus plus. C, uh, C++, plus plus move both forward. Else if ARR of C gets a 2, then this C knows that 
B is the right person to hand to to handle this zero. So it will swap this with B. Swap error of C with B with the error of B. Now move B backward. Don't move C forward. Why? Because C is still having some two in case it can happen. Now the C also still containing this two. Okay. So until it is not assured that C is at one or less than uh, one, uh, like uh, in the example we have studied that C is pointing to two even after reversing. So how can we move forward without fixing this? So don't move. Else move C plus plus. What is this else part? It means when the error of C is one. This is the else part. When C is pointing to one, we are not doing anything. Just simply moving like C plus plus. That's why this is handled in the else part. This is handled by the else part. So this is handled by the else part. This is handled by the else part, right? So this is the entire code. Let me run this code to show you. Let me run this code off, right? Okay. Let us run this code. Let us take some example as zero one two one zero one two. Let us run this code. So let us run this code and uh, check if it is correct or not. A is kept at zeroth index. There is some variable C is kept at zeroth index. There is some variable B is kept at n minus one index. While while C less than B, if arr of C C is carrying zero, it means C has has to hand over this value to the A by swapping. Swap error of A, comma error of C. Fine, okay, fine. Move this A plus plus ahead and C ahead for the next thing. Else, if when I told you now that you have to write when multiple if else condition, you have to do something like this. Error of C is equals to B. It is equals to two. Sorry. Then C knows that it has to hand over this value to the B variable. So swap error of C with B, with B, right? Moves B backward because two is fixed at the correct position. Else, else move C plus plus because C is pointing to one and nothing has to do. Nothing we have to do, right? Now let me print this array to show you that if it is actually segregated or not. Okay. So let. Okay, so this is the code. This is the code for segregating zero, one, and two with each other, right? Segregating them. Okay, so this was the entire code for segregating. Let us run this code off and see if it is correct or not. Let us see if it is correct or not, right? Let us run this code. Wow, it is giving us the correct answer, right? Zeros are coming at first, then we are having ones, and then we are having twos, right? So it means they are segregated. They are segregated in the ascending order, right? So I hope that this session is clear to you. I hope whatever questions we have covered, whatever one, two, three questions we have covered, you all are getting good understanding over these questions, right? Okay. So this was the video all about. All the best and thank you so much.